Hello and welcome to a new video on Apex Predator. Today I would like to go over the algorithm Apex Predator and the new developments and upgrades that I've uh, been working on. First things first, I would like to explain Apex Predator. Apex Predator is a mix of stochastic calculus and uh, artificial intelligence, particularly echostate neural networks. Um, if you're not familiar with echostate neural networks, uh, it has to do with reservoir computing, uh, where basically the neurons are randomly assigned and they have sparsity, rather than just being 100% uh, linearly assigned. Um, also, if you're not familiar with stochastic calculus, uh, there is a whole bunch of resources online in Wikipedia that you can consult. Um, particularly, we're going to be using geometric Brownian motion uh, geometric Brownian motion is a solution to a stochastic differential equation. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily important to know how to solve stochastic differential equations because many of the most interesting ones have solutions that are open and solved. Um, so it's more about being able to implement the actual solution than necessarily solving it, at least in my particular case. So what we do with Apex Predator is um, we predict volatility and we predict the average of the market. And then we throw those predictions into the geometric Brownian motion and the geometric Brownian motion makes, uh, it, it basically prices the market, okay? And that prediction may be good or it may be bad, right? So if, if the prediction is really, really, uh, let's say just in the right direction, um, we are going to take that error and we are going to create another process out of it, okay? So imagine you have 100 stock predictions from this algorithm and you want to create, you want to find the difference between the predictions and the actual prices. Well, that, um, that itself is kind of like a stochastic process. So what we can do is we can actually create that into a stochastic process and then use geometric Brownian motion and the same notion on top of it again. So let's say we have this uh, list of errors. We can take the volatility of the error, we can take the average of the error, and then we can use geometric Brownian motion one more time to find the prediction of the error. So let's talk about code. Let's talk about how we're going to do this. Um, so we're going to import pi ESN as ESN. Uh, this is an echo state neural network that I got um, from this person named CKND. I'll post his git or the person's GitHub in the uh, link below. We import numpy as MP, pandas as PD, uh, and import matplotlib as PLT. Um, what we're going to do is read our data. So we have a whole bunch of data. Um, all the ticks uh, for about a year that I collected and we're going to format them. So we're going to format the time and we're going to get a whole bunch of these, uh, you know, data sets. So we're going to have the five minute candle, 15, 30 minute and 60 minute. And here's the, uh, the NASDAQ data. In this case, we're going to use the data 30 minute ask and we're going to print that data. Now, most importantly, uh, one of the big changes that I've done is that we're going to get the time of the index, and we're going to get the price and the change, okay? So we can calculate the, uh, the average using a rolling mean and the volatility using rolling standard deviation. We just have to drop the NAND values and then drop the zero values and then take the price and drop the price value, uh, the drop the NAND values, we're all good. Okay. Now here's the fun part. We need ESN for the volatility, and ESN for the drift, and then ESN for the error drift, and then ESN for the error volatility, okay? And we're going to just print out the realized uh, volatility and meet, uh, average. We have a whole bunch of lists here. We have a signum function. Here's the, my implementation of geometric Brownian motion. Um, then we're going to basically do this whole uh, loop, right? We're going to loop through the data and try to run this algorithm, okay? So the first thing is that we need uh, at least 30 data points. So we're going to say if i is greater than 30. And then also if the time is between 1600 and less than 22. 
and we are going to proceed. We get the price, future price, prev, prev vol, prev volatility, current volatility, future volatility, previous, previous mu, previous mu, so on and so forth. And all we're gonna do is plug these into these echo state neural networks. So the prev, prev goes there, the prev goes there, and then for the prediction, we're going to go and put the current volatility in so we can get the next volatility. So we're gonna do the same thing for the mu, and then once we have those values and the predictions for the mu and the volatility, we are going to put it into the geometric Brownian motion right here. We're gonna sample the geometric Brownian motion 100 times, which is not a lot, by the way. Um, maybe not the best, but what we can deal with on this computer. And uh, we just divide the price, or this uh, pred price by 100 because we have 100 iterations, so we're gonna get the average price and we are going to uh, predict all of, we're gonna, sorry, not predict, print all of those uh, predictions and the correct price. We're also gonna do a little thing where we basically take, uh, say for example, the price was in the correct direction. If the, the stock went up and the prediction went up, it's correct. If the, you know, if it went down and it went down, it's correct. If it was not any of those things, then, you know, it was not correct. So. We basically just uh, append a one and a zero, and we can calculate our accuracy pretty nicely there. And now once we have a whole bunch of these uh, data points, say for example, in this case, if we have 35 uh, error data points, predictions, future price minus the prediction, um, we can do our error calculation. So we're gonna add 100, so it becomes away from zero. Turns out when you do this whole thing near zero, it doesn't really work too well, because it's log normal. So we add 100, take the absolute value. Why do we take the absolute value? It's because we're only interested in the distance. We're not interested in anything else. Um, only how much it goes up and how much it, not how much it goes up or how much it goes down, but just the difference. Okay, and so we basically uh, then create a data frame out of the error do the PCT change, and guess what? We're gonna take the uh, standard deviation, i.e. the volatility, we're gonna get the mu, which is the mean, rolling five, and we're going to do the whole same thing over again. We're gonna get the prev prev, the prev error, cur error, um, for the mu and the volatility, and we're gonna throw those into those echo state neural networks, right? We're gonna plug them in. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna say pred error equals zero, and then we'll have n underscore, um, this is the number of steps. And we're going to do that uh, beautiful geometric Brownian motion calculation again. Uh, and then we're gonna divide by 100 and then uh, subtract by 100 because we added 100 at the very beginning. And that gives us our pred error. Very, very nice. And all we have to do is uh, basically plot our results. It was very, very nice. So let's look at some of the results. Um, here we have um, these uh, future volatility, current volatility, pred volatility, future mu, uh, current mu, pred mu. And here we have uh, the current price. And as we can see, uh, this the pred price moved up about $4. And you know that's pretty good for a normal distribution. And in the correct price, it jumped up to the 66.85. So that's a huge jump. We're not particularly interested in pricing it correctly. We're just interested in the directionality of the thing. So this was a, definitely a win. Um, once again, here we have uh, the current price is 150.66.85. The pred price was 150.66.12, but the correct price went up to about uh, 15.104.35. I don't necessarily consider this one a loss because it really predicted that it wouldn't do anything, and so since this would be a nothing burger, we, I don't think we'd lose anything on this trade. We wouldn't take it. Um, once again, it and again, the whole thing is like the prediction gets better as it learns. Um, here we have the current price, the pred price, and it jumps up. That one's correct. Um, this one, uh, once again, we have this very shallow difference. We wouldn't really take it because it's flat. But it jumps up to 125.6. And then over time, the whole point is, is that with the echo state neural network, um, it will get better and better. So as you can see, it's kind of jumping around a bit. It takes uh, quite some time. 
I usually let this run all night and by the time the night rolls around it's doing really 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 well and it's nice and trained so uh, some uh, immediate criticisms of this uh, setup is that this uh, rolling mean and standard deviation is completely arbitrary I've just chosen five could be 15 could be 10 the echo state neural networks might need uh, better sparsity and better spectral radiuses that's a very big possibility um, the geometric Brownian motion is this n number of steps that I chose through a 30 minute time frame is completely arbitrary. Uh, another thing is that this uh, 100 right here is a very low sample size. You might need more, but that would require more computation. Uh, another thing too is that this, um, this may not necessarily be absolute. It could be uh, something else. So we could change this from absolute value to just the regular difference. Once again, we choose a rolling standard deviation of five and a rolling standard deviation of mean of five, completely arbitrary. Uh, again, this n underscore is uh, 30 times 60 times five, um, which is about 9,000, I think. Uh, doing the math off the top of my head. Um, that's maybe not appropriate. Um, maybe there's a better number of steps. And other than that, I can't think of any other critiques. Um, I do want to say the big thing for me that really changed this is that instead of just predicting the volatility, I'm also predicting the drift. And I don't know why I didn't predict the drift before. Uh, seems like a natural consequence that both would need to be predicted. Um, but hey, uh, we're just trying to create a scalping tool um, so clearly we wouldn't use this on news events. Uh, this drift and volatility are uh, very uh, sensitive, right? So this would be kind of related to the vol queue and the drift. I don't even know what that would be related to. But uh, one last critique is that I am using a normal random distribution. So the, the, uh, the NASDAQ is very fat tailed. In other words, it has a higher kurtosis of three. Uh, and this, this this normal random distribution is just one approach. So I'm assuming a normal random and then just taking the error and assuming the error is normally distributed. That is uh, definitely up for debate. Um, that may not be the case. The error might not be normally distributed, but I have a feeling that it's pretty effective for the scope and the resources that I have. Uh, in fact, tons and tons and tons of resources go into predicting volatility and predicting mu so geometric brownian motion can be uh, produced correctly um, but you know that's uh, it's a whole industry and I, I don't have uh, you know the resources to, to invest that heavily into so I'm just using um, a basic approach um, to predicting mu and the volatility with ESNs so let's see if this gets any better. Um, yep, we went up. So uh, this says uh, current price 103.75. And then um, this goes up to 129.7. The correct price was 109.8, not bad. And as you can see, uh, over time, the predictions definitely get better uh, because the Echo State Neural Network picks up on more underlying chaos. Uh, another critique that could be is that uh, the neural networks could be trained before uh, actually diving into predictions. So we could uh, theoretically stave off this uh, price predicting operation and just train the echo state neural networks on the mu and the volatility and then dive into predictions instead of just seeing uh, this kind of uh, face plant a few times before it picks up. So hopefully you enjoyed my video, uh, like, share, and subscribe. I do want to emphasize because of the nature of this code, um, I can't put it on GitHub because of, you know, I, I just, it's too sensitive. If you are particularly interested in, you know, working on this or, you know, getting some of the code, um, definitely send me an email. 
I'm always open to emails. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. You guys are wonderful. I love my viewers, by the way. You guys are so smart. Uh, we have a bunch of programmers, professional traders, just really, really smart people in the comments. And I just want to say I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for taking an interest in, in my ramblings. Uh, originally, I created this YouTube channel not to you know blow up to you know a million subscribers or anything like that. I just wanted to get my ideas out there and get some feedback. Um, so I really appreciate the comments. I really appreciate people reaching out to me in email and saying, hey, this is a great idea, or hey, that was a really dumb idea. Um, so I just, I just want to express my gratitude to you all. So hopefully you have a great day. Uh, like, share, and subscribe.